Hey, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to another episode with iTrack. Big shout out to all my new subscribers, man. And shout out to all the iTrack fam. I appreciate you guys for tapping in once again. If this is your first time here, what we like to do is take a look at the most interesting and creepy TikToks and kind of evaluate for ourselves whether these are fact or fake. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Smash that subscribe button. If you're not already a part of the iTrack fam, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Within this tattered teddy bear is not stuffing, but a living, breathing human. A prisoner of a heinous charade. Early 2000s, Savannah. Martha and Eugene Grimes, a couple revered for fostering children and aiding the needy, harbored dark secrets in their sprawling Victorian home. Guests, seeking refuge, were sedated by the Grimes and forcibly stitched into animal costumes, turned into unwilling performers for a perverse entertainment. The Grimes' grotesque charade continued undetected for 18 years, the truth hidden by the couple's veneer of generosity and community spirit. The horrors were unearthed in 2022 when a former foster child, triggered by the game Five Nights at Freddy's, recalled the trauma, leading to a shocking investigation. As the investigation deepened, authorities uncovered a mass grave on the property's outskirts. Amidst the overgrowth, many victims were found, still grotesquely bound within their costume prisons. Now that whole story is very believable when you look at the two culprits. They look very deranged themselves, like not in their right mind. So yeah, that I believe that. For sure. Let me know what you think in the comments, though. Shocking turn of events for a 48-year-old dad who has lost his hands and legs after doing something so many of us do every day. I got licked by a dog. That's right. All this from being licked by a dog. Greg Manafell is also braced for more. He's about to lose his life. nose. And they told me my nose is mummified, too, and it's almost like a frostbite. <laughs> Greg's life changed forever when he went to a neighborhood party at a park near his home in Wisconsin. There was like five dogs at the party. They were all swimming in the pond. And I was touching all of them because I love dogs. Greg's doctors believe he contracted a bacteria from one of the dogs that licked him. I ended up not washing my hands and rubbing my eye or my face, my mouth somehow. His own pit bull, Ellie, has been ruled out as the source of the infection because she wasn't at the party and according to Greg's family, she doesn't lick. Beverly Hills veterinarian Jeffrey Werber says the bacteria that infected Greg is called Capnocytophica canamorsis. It's found in 75% of dogs, but it's extremely rare for it to infect a human. This happened to have been a case of a very unusual outcome, very rare. Um, I think that the CDC reported something like 12 cases last year. One day after the party, Greg started exhibiting signs of sepsis. He would speak sentences and then it would turn into like gibberish almost. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't make sense, like he was delirious. Greg is remarkably upbeat. I'm just happy to be alive. They did what they did, saved my life. His grieving wife and son say he's actually helping them through the ordeal. There's no time for us to feel sorry. I mean, we just gotta use what we have to help him. He didn't survive to lay in bed and cry about it. So is it okay to have your dog lick you? Dr. Werber says he's licked dozens of times a day. In my opinion, you can still have your dog lick you, and yes, you will be fine. Those odds are still too high for me for, for something like that to happen. I'm good. I'm glad I'm more of an exotic fish type of guy. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I've also heard of, like, even worms, you know? People people being more populated with worms when they get licked by, like, cats or dogs. So, so big shout out to all the animal lovers out there. Extremely classified document dealing with religion, and it's about that thick. Period. But why would there be any classified material dealing with religion? I want to go back to the religion thing. I want you to say it. It just it's so it's so far out. It, it's uh, all right. It's your objection there. has been noted. Okay. What does it say? That we're containers. That's how. That's how supposedly the aliens look at us. That we are nothing but containers. Containers of. Containers. Maybe containers of souls, you can come up with whatever theory you want, but we're containers, and that's how we're mentioned in the documents. Um, that religion was specifically created, so we have some rules and regulations for the sole purpose of not damaging the containers. The souls. 
meaning well the souls or the bodies or whatever right that's, that's meaning like we're uh, mean. we're containers for souls that they're going to use at some other point right and that they have something to do with uh, pro different prophets and and biblical figures yeah now that makes sense because when you pass away that's why they put your body in a grave in the dirt but your soul it just you know it leaves your body so I guess you you know your body is a container for the soul, right? That that makes sense. Once you visualize correctly, the shift happens immediately. Here's how to do it. So number 1, you must be crystal clear about whatever it is that you desire to manifest. Write it down. And next high flyers, see a clear picture of the result. And then use this affirmation blank is already mine to enjoy. The second thing you need to do is what I call theater of the mind. What you're going to do every night or every morning is you're going to create a scene in your mind of the reality that you desire to live. And you're going to believe you're already living it. Live as if you already have the wish fulfilled. And say this affirmation, I am so grateful I have received everything I desire. Oh yeah, that's a fact. And I think he took that script right out of the Bible too, if I'm not mistaken. Something crazy about cats you may have never heard of. The first thing is their pupils, their slitted pupils. Do you know how rare that is in the animal kingdom? Lions do not have slitted pupils. They're round just like ours. Tigers don't have slitted pupils either nor do jaguars. Now this is kind of the weird thing because I kind of thought that a domesticated house cat came from a big cat at some point down the line. But if they don't have slitted pupils like a house cat does, then what does have slitted pupils? Reptiles, snakes and alligators have slitted pupils, not any other cat. Now in many cultures, ancient reptiles were considered to be kind of a trippy creature that had other abilities and senses. The other thing that's weird is that Cats hiss like a snake, and they have slitted pupils like a reptile. They also love to eat mice, as do snakes. Now, we know how much the ancient Egyptians loved cats. Cats also have pineal glands. And you notice that cats will do that thing where they'll look in the corner of the room and be making a fuss about what seems to be nothing. It is believed that their eyes enable them to see outside of the visible light spectrum that me and you are bound by. Now, it's not known how a cat has half the attributes of a lion and half the attributes of a snake, but perhaps some genetic tinkering went on many, many years ago in ancient worlds and civilization. Okay, here I'm in Studio City right now. I have never seen the LA River this high. And we're gonna go to the other side too. Okay, so this is the CBS Radford side. And going ahead and going over to this side here, too. I mean, I've lived here for over 30 years, and I've never seen it this high. Go ahead and go on this side again. What they call Omicron configuration, where the craft is using one generator, uh, or Delta configuration, where it's us utilizing all three. Delta configuration would be for space travel. Essentially, the craft will tilt up on its side, focus the three gravity generators to a single point, and move through space that way. And as opposed to what we're used to, for instance, a plane, once it's in the air, we envision thrust or some force coming out the back of it to push it forward. The crafts work completely opposite of that, is once they're hovering in the air, they'll swing the gravity, two remaining gravity generators up in front of them and create a distortion, essentially a downhill, and the craft rolls downhill for infinity. That's why they look goofy when they fly around at low speed. The gravity field around the Earth is not completely constant and stable, depending on the 
minerals and density of the earth underneath it. So its low speed mode is, is kind of unstable for the most part. I honestly, sincerely, and unequivocally do not expect any of your audience to believe any of this. Robert Bigelow said to me, they're walking among us. What do you mean, they're walking among us? I said, they're, they're walking among us. They live right here. Before I say this, this guy legitimately is in a position to know a lot more than I know. He had the government contracts. He had the contacts. He had the intellectual heavyweights in the scientific community all working for him. This guy definitely knows a lot. No question. And the guy's a billionaire. And then the fact that he's hoarding it all and it's under armed guard in a vault at his house, it kind of pisses me off a little bit. He says, James, um, do you understand the implications of disclosure? He said the economy would collapse, organized religion would collapse. I'm not saying that I believe this. I'm just telling you what he said to me. Nah, we can't pretend like we didn't just see that ship in the clouds like that. I know I saw it. Let me know what you think in the, in the comments, though. I'm hella scared. That whole fence is done. Oh, my God. Yeah, Cali has definitely been getting the downpour. Everybody in the West, specifically like the Cali area, definitely be safe out there because it is raining a bit harder than it normally has ever been. CERN is the largest machine in the world and you can go to their website and you'll see their symbol has three sixes, six, six, six. And on their website it says, what is the nature of our universe? What is it made of? This machine accelerates particles at the speed of light. Many believe when these particles collide, they create miniature black holes. Many spiritual be people believe that when these black holes open, they're able to observe matter in a different dimension and that whatever's living on that side might be able to get through to this side. Could you imagine if hypothetically the CERN machine is able to open up into, you know, uh, portals to other dimensions? We know that there's other dimensions. This is a fact of science. You don't even have to believe in God. Every scientist says, yes, there are more dimensions than the one we can see and smell and touch. Like we live in three, there's maybe up to 11, maybe even more dimensions than that. These demonic beings have lived in a parallel dimension to ours. They're on this earth. They have cities. Some of the scholars in Islam believe the demonic realm, the throne of the devil is above water. They don't know if it's the Bermuda Triangle or the Devil's Sea, but in the parallel dimension, that is where their throne, his throne sits. So imagine now the demonic realm is on this earth, but in a parallel dimension. Imagine if they can get into this dimension and they still have their powers and they're able to shape shift. We know in the, in the religion that these demons follow us our whole lives. They know how we, they can mimic us, they can talk. Could you imagine if they get through into this world and you see your dead grandfather from 30 years ago and they're telling you, there is no God. We've cured death. No one will ever die again. Look, we brought your grandfather back, but it's not your grandfather. It's a demon acting like him. I'm not saying you'll see that for certain, but it's one of my theories. We know these beings can shape shift. They can travel at the speed of light. They live in a parallel dimension. They can influence thought and they have brought much innovation to humanity with the human beings that have sold their souls for black magic, for knowledge, They've done rituals, and this is why they have an obsession with Solomon, the Temple of Solomon, and why I think we are getting closer. Yeah, CERN definitely seems to be shrouded in mystery because everybody seems to have their own theory about what is happening when, this, when these particles collide. 
I know I definitely don't want to find out if demons are coming through any kind of portals because that's not something anybody wants to experience, I'm sure. But definitely let me know in the comments what you think or if you know something that I don't. Can I leave you an apple? That hair is growing. What in the fucking Narnia? Some kind of Rick James? There's an eye in between the, there's a face in between the two trees there on the right. What's your name? People say, yeah, I do this and I do that when they watch. Now he's saying there was a Bigfoot, but I thought I saw something blinking, like that really that dark figure, that dark brown figure in between the trees, but I'm not sure I saw that too clear. Let me know if you've seen the actual Bigfoot in between the trees. <laughs> what a god! Hello! <laughs> what a god! But I, I see California being hit with a devastating earthquake. Oh, you do? Right after the fucking tornado. The tornado's gonna hit us? The tornado that. hits, wipes out Houston, and all of a sudden we get this crazy ass 11 point earthquake. 11 point earthquake. You You're fucking with me, bro. I just told you. 11? So when it happens, it's going to be, it's going to be devastating. That's the big one? Yeah. That's. We're uh, been, I mean, to be honest, we've wow. been owed a I know while. That's it's going to be a game changer. Song. It'll be, it'll be. Tap, go, tap, delete, delete. It'll go down in history and it's going to create uh, a tidal wave that that's is 400 said. feet high. And it's called Big John. I've been getting the name John. Where is it? How far is it going to go in then? Four hundred feet. I know. There's four football fields. Um, if you want beachfront property, I would probably invest in Arizona. I had no clue blood types could carry such a huge responsibility. So uh, if you're blood type, oh, let me know if if, if there's an, even an inkling of truth to what he was saying. You know, psychic abilities and things like that. Yeah, I'd be interested in, in knowing. What I'm about to show you is the most shocking discovery I've made in my truth journey. The true name of God has been removed from our Bibles over 6,000 times. And that name is Yahuwah, represented by the Tetragrammaton YHWH, which translates to the numerical sequence of 10565. The name of God YHWH repeats over and over in your DNA. The shortened version of His name is Yah. We see this in Psalm 68 verse 4. Sing unto God, sing praises to His name. Extol Him that rideth upon the heavens by His name, Jah. But guess what? The letter J was only invented 500 years ago. If we go to the original Hebrew for Jah, it is Yah. Right? And we know Jehovah is a false translation because Hova in Hebrew translates to ruin, disaster, and calamity. Who's the one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy? Destruction. It's Satan. What did Satan say in his heart? He said, I will send above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. He wants to take over God's position. Which is what got him cast out of heaven and why he's so angry now. He's going to try to deceive all of us. The name Yah is also written on your face. Y-A-H. You also say the name Yahuwah every single time you breathe. All right, he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Your bronchial breath, the inhale and exhale, and the inhale and exhale of the vesicular breath are both represented by a 3 to 1 ratio. Alright, Psalms 150 verse 6, let everything that has breath praise Yahuwah. You're saying his name every time you breathe and you don't even know it. Right, we know it's not Yahweh because the breath is a 3 to 1 ratio. 
Yahuwah, not a two to one ratio. The name Yahweh is a false pagan god. You can look this up. Yahweh is literally a pagan goddess. It's all over the internet. It's a pagan deity. It's basically just yet another deception from Satan. So the YHWH was actually removed and changed to Lord over 6,000 times in the Old Testament. So every time you see Lord, it was originally his name, Yahuwah. Right, the YHWH, which looks like this. So this name YHWH, Yahuwah, was changed and removed and translated to Lord 6,000 times in the Old Testament. This is due to the ineffable name doctrine from the devil. Right, this is basically a doctrine given to the translators that is said that we should not pronounce his name because it's too holy to be uttered. But that would actually destroy the third commandment. We do not bring the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to nothing or to naught. For Yahuwah does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught or to nothing. That's what it actually means to take the Lord's name in vain. is bringing it to nothing, which is what Satan did. Really not supposed to be saying Jesus or Jehovah. The J was invented 500 years ago. Now, what does this name actually mean? If you translate his name into Hebrew, remember they read right to left. It states, behold, hand, behold, nail. Or in other words, behold the nails in the hand. Right, so the Most High's name literally prophesies the death of our Messiah long before it happened. Remember, Satan hates this name. Right, because what did the death and resurrection of Messiah do? It gave us power as believers, right? And it also gave us salvation and gave us entry to Yah's kingdom. Right, the true name of the Son, now it's not Jesus, it's Yahusha. Shah in Hebrew means salvation, so this translates to Yah is salvation. Remember what Messiah said in John 5, 43. I have come in my Father's name, and you have not received me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will receive him. Right, he came in the Father's name, Yahuwah, because Yahusha means Yahuwah is salvation. But we are all praying to Jesus, which means Jehovah is salvation. We know Hova means destruction, ruin, and calamity. So we should not be praying to that name. Right, this is due to Hellenization, right, which is Greek influence. But the original name is Yahusha of the Son, which means Yah saves. But the Greeks transliterated it to Jesus, which is false. We don't change people's name. Especially when he told us in Exodus 3 verse 15, Yahuwah, Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my remembrance to all generations. He said this is his name forever in his memorial to all generations. Imagine I went to your gravestone, your memorial, and scratched off your name and changed it, or transliterated it. It's ridiculous. Now remember, every time it was supposed to say YHWH, it was translated to Lord 6,000 times. Now, I understand the word Lord is a term for the Most High. But if you go into the Hebrew, Baal translates to Lord. Right, so Satan has basically taken out God's name, brought it to nothing, which violates the third commandment. It has us all saying these Greek Hellenized transliterations of the true name. And guess what? His name is actually in the older Bibles. This is the 1560 Geneva. Yahuwah. Right, that's how it's said in Greek. Right, but what did they do? They even changed that to Jehovah in all the newer Bibles. If y'all want a part two on this series, let me know. I got a lot to say. This was a very hard one for me to accept. It had to take a lot of praying and research. But he's given me peace on it now and he's given me lots of confirmation. May Yah bless you guys. Don't forget to like and follow. Shalom. Which means peace in Hebrew. Hey, big shout out to him for uh, breaking that down because, you know, a lot of people might have missed that, you know, and I know that it's not taught that way in the majority of um, churches or whatnot. So, yeah, that's 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 dope. That's super dope. Well, you guys, that's another one in the books. I appreciate you guys, like always, for stopping by and watching another one with me, because if you did not be watching them by myself, but if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Do me that favor. 
smash that subscribe button if you're not already part of the iTrack fam, and I will definitely catch you on the next one.